Hey guys, what's up, it's Iflin here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to defeat the Exploiter boss that was added into Warframe last night. If you guys aren't already aware, the Exploiter is how you farm the part blueprints for the new Warframe known as Hildren. Kind of sucks that it took this long for this boss to come out, but it is what it is. It was kind of tied to this event where you have to go and seal fractures around Fortuna, so I'm going to have a link in the description and in a card to that video where I show you guys how to do that. That event is going to kind of come around like the ghouls and stuff. So you just got to wait for that to come around before you can do this fight because you need the resource from that to actually start this boss fight. So just keep that in mind moving forward. So with this boss, all we have to do is throw these canisters, the coolant canisters that have been hit up by the, the little quicks that are happening around Fortuna and that the orb mother, the boss itself, actually makes happen during the fight, right? So we get the coolant containers from the little rack noise that are running around. We pick them up, we put them in the fissures that are shooting out the fire from the ground, and then we pick it up again, and then we just throw it at the orb mother to overheat it, and then we walk up to it, and then a fancy pants animation happens. Now, that's the second phase. The first phase we're able to skip right now using Nova and Antimatter Drop. So all you have to do is walk up to it, press your second ability, then charge it up with uh, a shotgun or something, and then just hit it square in the middle of the head uh, on the Orb Mother, and then it's going to destroy the vents which the Orb Mother is trying to uh, protect by freezing in ice, right? So you'll see whenever we jump into it, the equipment that I'm using right now is of course Nova with an M prime build but I would say the real hero right now is Arcane Warmth because there is phases in this fight where you can be slowed and this actually helps out a lot so it's a standard M prime build you don't have to do anything fancy or anything like that just go ahead and get your 145% power strength and then stack the rest into duration throw on vitality and the likes I'm running energy siphon because cross projection doesn't really affect this fight at all and then coaction drift to buff up the energy regen from that of course you can run whatever you like it doesn't really matter then I've got my Tigris Prime for my antimatter. I got my Catch Moon uh, Kick Gun. So make sure that the chamber of your kit gun is Catch Moon. It just makes this fight a lot easier, in my opinion. And I've got my own custom Spin the Winds Aw. Doesn't really matter what your melee is because you're not going to be using it that much. And then I would say on your operator, your operator is the next big thing that you should be really paying attention to in this fight. So if we go ahead and we head into that, then we go to Equipment, go to Operator. The Arcanes for your operator that I recommend having are elevate right so then you can just swap in and out of your operator to get your health back on whatever warframe it is that you happen to be playing so the other thing i'd recommend is if you're playing nova make sure that you have 100 percent uptime on your one so have that up as much as possible because that's giving you damage reduction and the likes doesn't really matter which frame you play for this just make sure that you are able to survive right that is the main thing staying alive because the the orb does throw out a lot of uh basically just damage at you. So that is the, the one big problem. Maybe bring an Oberon in your squad. You can solo this, but doing it in a grip is just a lot faster. You're gonna get resources from Fortuna. You're gonna get uh, Toroids, which give you a lot of standing. And then you're also going to get the Hildren parts and Ephemeras, right? So Ephemeras are the little walking trails. You get the lightning one and the ice one from here. So it's not extremely rewarding, but I can definitely see why players who aren't 110% like at that endgame mark uh, would enjoy this boss fight and feel like it's really, really rewarding. I just don't personally see myself playing it that much, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell my squad that I'm ready. Uh, ready? There we go. And uh, yeah, we're going to jump in, do the fight and all that cool stuff. So it's really easy. Like I said, all you got to do is kind of learn the phases and learn how to activate it. That's one big thing as well knowing how to activate this fight so if you go ahead and bring up your map it is all the way over here just above the harindi crater at this cave right here so jump in the air activate your itzel put down an energy pad blink all the way over there and then it's at the bottom right so it's down this area right here so the small cave on the mini map if my ui wasn't bugged you'd be able to see it if we just go ahead and bring it up there is a little small cave on the mini map that you're able to see, implying your UI doesn't bug like mine. But uh, yeah, so there's a little bit of story element to this, and I'm going to shut up and let you guys hear that as soon as we enter this door right here. So this door is um, basically the door that was locked during the event where we had to find all the data hashes, right? So if we walk on through, whenever everybody gets here, you're going to hear music that's going to start to play and a little bit of dialogue.
home again. Deck 12. Most of the old SU never made it out. Legs' folks and Zood's sisters. It broke her, you know? We've all tried getting through to her, but she insists they never existed. Zood? I hear them. My sisters. Everything I hear echoes from my sisters' ears to my mind. One by one, I remember them saying goodbye. All right, so the door finally opened. Last run, we had the all F4 because one of our party members DC'd and then the door bugged. So it was like, damn, not so good. So let's go. So whenever you get in here, this is the actual boss fight room. You want to head over to the top left hand side up on this ledge. And then you're going to be putting a resource, the Fermia, uh, diluted Fermia in this, in the Fermia condenser. And then what's going to happen is there's going to be little things that throw out Fermia canisters, which we're going to throw at the boss. Now the boss is going to come up or come down from up there. And then what we do is we shoot these rocks that you can see that my, my team is shooting at. And it's going to make the exploiter fall down. So there's one down. And then there's going to be another one that comes down. Okay, somebody already shot it. And then she falls down. Now what we do, we use Nova's M Prime. And just aim it at her. And there you go. That's the first phase done. And destroys all four vents. And now she's going to try and freeze her uh, little coolant cells or vents. You're just going to keep on shooting your antimatter drop at her to make sure that you, you know, skip this phase sort of thing. If you're too late, then what's going to happen is uh, she's going to freeze them and then you're going to have to throw the Fermia canisters at her, right? At the frozen vents. So fortunately, we managed to get the skip. Now she's just going to, you know, go back up the hole that she came down from. And what you guys want to do is come up to one of these little, what do you call them, vendors here? And then it's going to shoot out the Fermia canisters. You're going to pick one up. And then we're going to go all the way back to the door that we came into this room from. So right here. So we don't actually have to go. We don't have to fight. The, the spider anymore we just wait for this phase to be over and then we're gonna go out and then we'll go back up to the surface and then the boss fight's gonna continue up there so as you can see she's probably just going for a lot of dialogue right now exploiter orbs just talking and doing her doing her jazz dialogue from the exploiter is a little bit cringy not that big of a fan of it i prefer you know Ridza talking and uh, yuriko and whatnot but she is going to just keep on going for this dialogue because we have skipped, you know, that first phase, right? So she's just going to go all the way up the hole and Richard's going to talk and all that jazz. So now we go back to the door. Over here. Like so. Now that's her making the threat to go, you know, destroy Fortuna and whatnot. And calling on her little Rachnoid babies. So you gotta come to this door, and this is another door that can bug out, so you wanna be wary of that in case somebody has some sort of connectivity issues, right? So you can see the little in the bottom left-hand corner. Once this opens up, spider's gonna spawn in. Should be good to go. If not, calls for another jump cut, right? So there we go. Nice, we got lucky. So now you can see this little bar that is below our minimap. What we have to do is we have to throw the Fermia canisters that we brought by using our alt fire, right? And we want to keep on doing that. So you're going to have the Rachnoid spawning in. So you can see them over here. This one. Just go ahead, kill the Rachnoid. Going to kill this guy over here. Do not let the Rachnoid get close to the Exploiter. Because if you do, then what's going to happen is that bar on the left hand side is going to go down again. And our goal is to make it as high as possible. What we want to do is take the coolant cells to the fire, pick it up again, and then throw it at her. Like this. Okay, I think I may have overthrew that. 
Just just a little bit, but my teammates are probably gonna throw it at her as well. So here's another one. You can only use the little fractures in the grind once. There is another arachnoid. You do not want them to get close to her. So let's pick this one up. Get close. Go ahead and throw it. Like that. It says that you have to shoot the canister, but you don't. Just go ahead and throw it at the exploiter, and then it'll, you know, start to charge up that bar on the left-hand side. Let's go ahead and do this one. Like so. And like I said, use your Magus Elevate to get your health back, because she is quite damaging. Use your one to give yourself damage reduction. And I'm going to go ahead and get close to her. And then we're going to jump on top of her into this cool animation. We're going to bring out this part of the exploiter herself. And then we're just going to shoot at her. Like uh, this. And there you go. That is the first phase of the second phase done. And you want to do the exact same thing, except it's just going to take longer to fill up that little bar below our mini-map, right? So it's just the same thing over and over again. Don't let the Ragnoids get close. You can use M-Prime to slow them down. As you can see. Actually, maybe not. Okay, there it is. Oh, he just stood still. Maybe you can't use M-Prime. I could have swore that that was working earlier, but okay. You can't use M-Prime. Don't worry about it, but you can use Gara's 4. So if you bring a Gara with you, get the Gara to use her 4 to block the spiders from getting anywhere near the Orb Mover. And you want to wait for her, or the Orb Mover, the Exploiter Orb, sorry. Uh, you want to wait for her to do the big slam down in the ground, which is going to make the fractures appear again. So as you guys can see, there's absolutely no fractures around us at the minute. We need to wait for her to do a specific type of attack, which is going to make her overheat. And it's going to cause these things to come out of the ground again. So just, just wait for it. We just got to be patient. Shooting mortars out. Again, you can just use your, your operator to go ahead and dodge stuff. But you want to be making sure that the, the rachnoids don't get close at all. So we got William up in the air right there. And he's just sniping them as he sees them. So here we go. She, you know, used her ability, which made the fractures come out of the ground. She did kill her down and uh, kill herself down in the process. But that's totally fine because it doesn't kill her down all the way. Whenever she gets to about half, that's whenever she's going to use the uh, the fire ability, which is going to kill her down and make the fractures in the ground, right? So here we go. Go ahead and do that again. Another big Kobe. Get the little container, put it in the fire, throw it. There we are. Oh, completely missed. Good job, me. What you can also do is throw the coolant cells whenever they're not on fire at these things and make them have like double the effect. So if the orb mover happened to go over, well, the orb mover, the exploiter orb happened to go over this, she's going to be heated up even more, right? So you can just kind of lead her over these fire traps, uh, implying she gets close to them, and they will heat her up very, very fast as well. It's another one. That's the wrong one. Let's go ahead and toss that away. Pick this one up. We want to toss it at her. There you go. And that's going to heat her up. And you kind of just have to be fast with it. So you want to be throwing the canisters at her within quick succession of one another then that way she's going to heat up even faster. So if you have one person in the air just sniping the, uh, the, the arachnoids, and then you have the other people just throwing the canisters over and over and over again, that's going to be the best way to do it. So you have three players just throwing and one player sniping. And then that's how you do it. So you're going to have to go through this phase a few times. Let's go ahead and pick this up. Heat it up. Put it back in again. Pick it up again. Dodge this attack. Okay. Threw it at her. Like this. So you can see that because another player threw one at her and then I threw one at her, then she hit up really, really fast. She's down again. We just jump on top. Get put into this animation. And then we are, we're on another damage phase again, right? So pull it out, like so. You don't have to press anything during that, by the way. And then you just go ahead and damage her. I'm using radiation damage on my catchman, if you're interested in that. Crucible and fire, you can use that as well. You don't really have to change up your mods on your weapon at all. And now we're doing the exact same thing. We just get the coolant cells, and we put them in the fire. And then we go ahead and toss it at her. 
like so. And hopefully that hits. I'm just going to get the ones all the way over here. William did a great job of just sniping everything. Don't think that one did hit her, actually. So you can throw it while you're aim gliding, which is pretty huge. But you'll see that we do less and less to her as the fight kind of goes on with the cells. Go ahead and pick this up. We toss it at her. That one blew up way too early. Sometimes it does that. I think that happens if you have an ability like, um, what's it called? Your one or Gara's two up around you, it'll maybe blow up like way too close to you because that will count as kind of like damaging it, right? Because we can shoot the cells. I think it would be a better idea in DE's part if they just made it so that you didn't have to shoot the cells at all. Like the players couldn't deal damage to the cells and they just, it just exploded whenever it hit the ground or hit the orb of her, right? That way it would stop the players from feeling like they can't use Nova's 1 or, or Gara's 2 because I've seen people saying in my ch chat today that, um, you know, it didn't make any, any sense to use Gara because of that issue with the 2, right? It's a little inconsistent issue, but it's still there regardless and you just kind of seen it happen, right? So go ahead and throw this at her again, like so. Pick up this coolant. William's probably going to snipe these guys again. Like, we see literally no Rachnoids because, you know, we got William just sniping them as they spawn in. Apart from that one that we just seen. Besides the point. Go ahead, toss this. Completely missed. I overshoot it quite a lot. Not used to the whole throwing mechanic yet. This is only, like, my... I want to say fifth time or so doing this fight, so... You also got to be very, very careful of, uh her like doing an attack and completely dodging your throw because that's happened more times than I like to admit as well. Let's go ahead and heat this one up too. Head back over again. Like so. There you go. Heat her up quite a bit. Kill that guy. Put this in the thing. Pick up the thing. Dash towards the guy or the girl. The mother. The exploiter. Whatever. Whatever you want to call it. Spider of four legs, tick, orb, big robotic thing that's gonna kill everything. We don't kill it. I don't know. Up to you. Pick up the, the cell. Hello, cell. Thank you. Kill this guy. Dash over again. Throw it. Huge Kobe. Pick this one up. Put it in the fire. Rinse, repeat. Rinse, repeat. Rinse, repeat. Hello. There you go. Pick this one up, put it in the fire. It's just rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. It's kind of why I don't like this fight, but very much prefer Eidolons. But you can see because she's doing a fire attack now, she's heating herself up. So it's within our best interest to, you know, just get close to her. Chances are she'll reheat herself. Okay, just jump near in the animation again. And I. We pull her nose out, I guess, or a horn, whatever. There we go. It's off. And now, damage phase. Like that. And there you go. So whenever you do kill her, make sure to just stand in front of her or get into your itzel. Make sure you have energy to use your furt ability. Wait for it. This one is going to explo explode the same way the other spider explodes, so... Let me see. It's behind her, I think. Has it not spawned yet? Where are the rewards? Where are the rewards? I don't see any drops. Let's just go ahead and hit free. Close. There we go. I did get it, and somehow I didn't die, even though I was right up in her face. That one was a little bit interesting, but good thing I had Itzel. Couldn't see the, the rewards. Maybe I'm blind. I do have bad eyesight, but... Besides the point, but you got a uh, Yuriko and Zud talking, doing their stuff and things, and uh, yeah, that's the fight. Got your rewards. We go ahead. We get on top of this cliff. We press view mission progress. If Zud would like to go away, you can see you get a bunch of uh, mining materials, fishing parts. 
yada yada. And uh, we also got the uh, Hildren chassis, as you can see, drop. So you can get the ephemeras, you can get um, the Hildren parts, you get the, the toroids, which you can use to treat him with Little Duck and all that jazz. But uh, yeah, other than that, that is uh, pretty much the fight. And you can just do it again, like you don't have to go back to Fortuna. You can just repeat the fight, just go back to the cave. And I find that after I do the fight, a group of these guys always spawns in for your Nightwave stuff, so this is something to keep in mind too. But other than that, that is uh, pretty much it. That's how you do the, the new boss fight, so... It was pretty lengthy. The more players you have, the quicker it's going to be. And yeah, go back in. And then hope for Nora to stop talking. Bye-bye, Nora. And that's it. So uh, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit like. If you want to see more Warframe content from me, hit subscribe. And I'll uh, see you guys in the next one.